The Book of the Two Eid Prayers Chapter on the Book of the Eid Prayer It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, I attended the prayer of Eid al-Fitr with the Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, Abu Bakr. Umar and Uthman and all of them prayed before the Qutbah, then delivered the Qutbah. The Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, came down, and it is as if I can see him, gesturing to the men to remain sitting, then passing through them and going to the women, accompanied by Bilal. He said, O Prophet, when believing women come to you, to give you the Baya pledge that they will not associate anything in worship with Allah. And he recited this verse until the end. Then he said, Do you adhere to that? One woman said, Yes, O Prophet of Allah, and no one else answered him. At that time I did not know who she was. He said, Give charity. And Bilal spread his garment and said, Come on. May my father and mother be sacrificed for you. And they started to throw their bracelets and rings into the garment of Bilal. Footnote 1. See Hadith number 956 in Sahih al-Bakari. Footnote 2. The verse, O Prophet, when believing women come to you, to give you the buyer pledge that they will not associate anything in worship with Allah is from Surat al-Mumtana, chapter 60, verse 12. Footnote 3. The word al fatak they say it is large rings, or rings worn on the leg. Ibn Abbas said, I bear witness that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, prayed before the Qutbah, then he delivered the Qutbah. He realized that the women could not hear him, so he went to them and reminded and exhorted them, and told them to give charity. Bilal spread out his cloak, and the women started to throw their rings, earrings, and other things. A similar report as Hadith number 2045 was narrated from Ayyub with this chain. It was narrated from Ibn Juraj, from Atta, from that Jabir bin Abdullah, who said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, stood one day on Id al-Fitr and prayed. He started with the prayer before the Qutbah, then he addressed the people. When the Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, had finished, he came down and went to the women and he reminded them while leaning on Bilal's arm. Bilal spread his garment, and the women threw charity into it. I said to Atta, was it the zakat al-fitr? He said, no, rather it was charity that they gave at that time. Women threw in their bracelets and so on. I said to Atta, is it a duty of the imam now to go to the women when he has finished his kutbah and addressed them, he said, Yes, for the life of me, that is a duty for them, and why is it that they do not do that? It was narrated that Jabir bin Abdullah said, I attended Id prayer with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he started with the prayer before the kutbah with no adan and no akama. Then he stood, leaning on Bilal, and enjoined taqwa of Allah, and urged us to obey him, and exhorted and reminded the people. Then he went to the women, and exhorted and reminded them. He said, Give charity, for most of you are fuel for hell. A woman with dark cheeks, who was one of the best of women, stood up and said, why is that, O Messenger of Allah? He said, Because you complain a great deal, and you are ungrateful to your husbands. They started giving their jewellery in charity, throwing their earrings and rings into the cloak of Bilal. 
It was narrated from Ibn Juraj, who said, Atta informed me from Ibn Abbas and Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari, who said, There was no Adan called on the day of Al-Fitr or Al-Adha. I asked him about that later on, and he said, Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari informed me that there was no Adan for the prayer on the day of Al-Fitr, neither before the Imam came out, nor afterwards, and there was no ikama or call or anything, no call on that day and no ikama. It was narrated that Ibn Abba sent word to Ibn Az Zubair when allegiance was first sworn to him, saying, There is no Adan called on the day of Al Fitr, so do not have the Adan called. So Ibn Az Zubair did not have the Adan called for it on that day, and he also sent word to him saying, the kutbah comes after the prayer. This is how it was done. So Ibn Az Zubair prayed before the kutbah. It was narrated that Jabir bin Samura said, I prayed both Id with the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him, not just one or two times, with no Adan and no Ikama. It was narrated from Ibn Umar that the Prophet, peace be upon him, Abu Bakr and Umar, used to offer the Eid prayer before the Qutbah. It was narrated from Abu Sa'id al-Qudri that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to come out on the day of Al-Adha and Al-Fitr and start with the prayer. When he had prayed and said the Salaam, he stood up and turned to the people who were sitting where they had prayed. If he needed to send out an army, he would do so, and if he needed to issue any other orders, he would do so. And he used to say, Give charity, give charity, give charity. The ones who gave the most charity were the women. Then he would depart. It continued like that until the time of Marwan bin al-Hakam, I went out hand in hand with Marwan until we reached the prayer place where Katir bin Asalt had built a minbar of clay and bricks. Marwan started to pull me with his hand as if he wanted to pull me towards the minbar and I was trying to pull him towards the prayer. When I realized what he was doing, I said to him, What about starting with the prayer? He said, No. O oh, Abu Sa'id, what you know has been abandoned. I said no by the one whose hand is in my soul. You are not doing anything better than what I know. Three times, then he left. Chapter on, it is permissible for women to go out to the Eid prayer and attend the Qutbah separated from the men. It was narrated that Um Atiyah said, On the two Eid, the Prophet, peace be upon him, commanded us to bring out the girls who had attained puberty and those who were in seclusion. But he told the menstruating women to keep away from the Musala prayer place of the Muslims. It was narrated that Um Atiyah said, we were commanded to bring out women in seclusion and virgins on the two Eid, and the menstruating women were to come out but stay behind the people, reciting takbir with the people. It was narrated that Um Atiyah said, On Al-Fitr and Al-Adha, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, commanded us to bring out the girls who had reached puberty, menstruating women, and women in seclusion. The menstruating women were to keep away from the prayer, but to witness goodness and the supplications of the Muslims. I said, O Messenger of Allah, one of us may not have a jilabab. He said, Let her sister lend her a jilabab to wear. Chapter on not offering any other prayer before or after the Eid prayer at the Masala prayer place. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas 
that the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, came out on the day of Ada or Fitr, and prayed to Raqqa, and he did not offer any other prayer before or after that. Then he went to the women, accompanied by Bilal, and commanded them to give charity. So women started giving their earrings and necklaces. A similar report, as hadith number 2057, was narrated from Shuba with this chain. Chapter on what is to be recited in the Id prayer. It was narrated from Ubaidullah bin Abdullah that Umar bin al-Khattab asked Abu Waqid al-Laithi what did the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, recite in Al-Ada and Al-Fitr? He said he used to recite Surat Kaf by the glorious Quran and the hour has drawn near and the moon has been cleft asunder. Footnote 1 The verse Kaf by the glorious Quran is from Surat Kaf chapter 50. Footnote 2 the verse, the hour has drawn near and the moon has been cleft asunder, is from Surat al-Kamar, chapter 54. It was narrated that Abu Waqid al-Layithi said, Umar bin al-Khattab asked me what the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, recited on the day of Eid. I said, the hour has drawn near and Surah Kaf by the glorious Quran. Footnote 1, the verse, The hour has drawn near, is from Surat al-Kamar, chapter 54. Footnote 2, the verse, Kaf, by the glorious Quran, is from Surat Kaf, chapter 50. Chapter on concession allowing play that involves no disobedience during the days of Eid. It was narrated that Aisha said, Abu Bakr entered upon me, and there were two of the young girls of the Ansar with me, who were singing the verses that the Ansar had recited on the day of Bu'ath. She said, But they were known to be singers. Abu Bakr said, Wind instruments of the shaitan in the house of the Messenger of Allah? peace be upon him. That was on the day of Eid. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, O Abu Bakr, every people has its Eid, and this is our Eid. It was narrated from Hisham with this chain, a similar hadith as hadith number 2061. And he said, Two young girls playing a duf. It was narrated from Aisha that Abu Bakr as Siddiq entered upon her, and there were two young girls with her during the days of Mina who were singing and beating the duff, and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was covering himself with his garment. Abu Bakr rebuked them, and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, uncovered his face and said, let them be, O Abu Bakr, for these are the days of Eid. She said, I remember the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, screening me with his Rida while I was watching the Ethiopians who were playing, and I was a young girl, so you should understand the fondness that young girls have for amusement. It was narrated that Urwa bin Azubar said, Aisha said, By Allah, I remember the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, standing at the door to my apartment when the Ethiopians were playing with their spears in the masjid of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, so that I could watch their games, and he was only standing there for my sake, until I was the one who left. So you should understand the fondness that young girls have for amusement. It was narrated that Aisha said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, came in, and there were with me two young girls who were singing the songs of Buath. 
he lay down on the bed and turned his face away. Then Abu Bakr came in and rebuked me, saying, The wind instruments of the shaitan in the presence of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, turned to him and said, Let them be. When he turned away, I signaled to them and they left. And on the day of Eid, the black men were playing with shields and spears. Either I asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, to let me watch, or he said, Do you want to watch? And I said, Yes. So he made me stand behind him with my cheek against his, and he was saying, Carry on, O Banu Arfida, until I had had enough. Then he said, Have you had enough? And I said, Yes. So he said, Go then. It was narrated that Aisha said, Some Ethiopians came to give a display with their weapons in the Masjid on the day of Eid. The Prophet, peace be upon him, called me, and I put my head on his shoulder and started watching their display until I was the one who decided to stop watching them. It was narrated from Hisham, a similar hadith, with this chain, but he did not mention in the Masjid. It was narrated from Ibn Juraj, who said, Atta informed me, he said, Ubaid bin Umar informed me, he said, Aisha told me that she said concerning those who were playing, I wish I could see them. She said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, stood up, and I stood at the door watching between his ears and his shoulder while they were playing in the masjid. Atta said, Persians or Ethiopians. He said, Ibn Atik said to me, rather they were Ethiopians. It was narrated that Abu Huraria said, While the Ethiopians were playing with their spears in the presence of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, Umar bin al-Khattab came in and he bent down to pick up some pebbles to throw at them. But the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Let them be, O Umar.